Welcome in then to the latest edition of Extra Time. Stevie here with me. Just the two of us. You're a lucky boy. Meanwhile, in Oslo, Jan Fjortov joins us before he heads to North London for the Arsenal game. And Frank still stuck in his empty cinema. <laughs> uh, what time do you have to fly? What is that? What is it's, that? Not, what is... It's, it's not a cinema first. It's a theater, which is completely different. And I performed uh, today and uh, one more time tomorrow. Then I go back to Paris and we uh, rehearse and play at the same time to be ready for Paris. We're going to be we're going to be performing for the next six months in Paris from Thursday to uh, Sunday uh, every night. So I'm rehearsing. And again, it's not a cinema, Mr. Thomas. It's a theater. Six what, months. What, what, yeah, but it, it killed my joke because I wanted to say, Frank, are you performing there on a no crowd? But he do perform there, and I'm very impressed, Frank. And going on a tour, very Thank impressive. You. Uh, you're right about the no crowd bit, Thank though, Thank you Jan. very much. <laughs> <laughs> Jan, if you played with Bellingham, would you be jealous as a forward because he's getting all the goals? No, absolutely <laughs> not. <that. laughs> I, I, would, I, I would tell him, I would have told him, please, can you give me the ball then the gate? But I was, I was, I was brilliant comment from uh, Angelotti today, where he said, I just have to remind people, he is a midfielder and not a striker. Now I would never be jealous. I've never been jealous of any of my teammates because I think that in our sport, you you can see when people do well, you know how hard it is, you know how good you have to be. And what Bellingham is doing at the moment, being up the Ronaldo, the Stefano, Puskas, I mean, amazing. He's 20. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it's pretty phenomenal, isn't it? Oh. Uh, from Bellingham to Richarlison, I can't get a link oh. to that. Do you start or bench him, Stevie? Of course, play today, didn't he? was taken off when Spurs were down to 10 men. Yeah, I think I think coming off the bench is, is where he is right now. That's where he should be if everybody's <laughs> fit. I mean, you can't rely on him. It's just the truth. In fact, even at Everton, you couldn't rely on him. You know, he, he scored a lot of goals that you didn't expect him to, and he probably missed a lot of chances that you expect him to score and didn't. So, yeah, I think he's better coming off the bench. Uh, Jan, who will win the Ballon d'Or first, Bellingham or Haaland? Haaland. Haaland should win it now because he was the best player last season. Yes, but he's not going to win it, is he? Lionel Messi's going to win it. Yeah, but still, we can discuss no, that. No, win it. no, Say that again? <laughs> Who will win Alvarez it? Alvarez is going to win it. No, Alvarez. <laughs> Alvarez, he won four trophies. Yes, right, yes. We're not going to start a debate. We're not doing that debate now. We're doing the debate who's going to win it yeah, first, right. Bellingham or Haaland? Yeah, no, I think, okay. I think that, uh, I think that uh, Haaland should win it. Uh, and I think that Messi would uh, win it because that's what they do at Ballon d'Or. That's not the but question. Bellingham, it... <laughs> I said Haaland straight away, Dan Thomas. No, Please listen to what I say. He's not going to win it. It's not happening. I see. You asked me, Dan Thomas asked me, and on behalf of a uh, tweet, Jan, who will win it first? And I said Haaland. No, you said Haaland should win it, but he's not going to win it. So let's fast okay, forward was, then to who I, will I win was, it next season or the season after. Haaland. But won't Bellingham do well in the Euros and therefore that could be a defining factor? Yeah, but you, you can't punish Ellen and Haaland for yes, being the Yes, but you weed. can in the Ballon d'Or. That's what happens in the Ballon d'Or, Jan. Everyone gets punished. This is not the Oscars. This is Ballon d'Or. Well, that, that's that even mean? worse. Well, to, be fair, though, to be fair to Jan, you can't go making up your own rules. But they do in the Ballon d'Or. Well, you're making up your own rules but, for whatever he says. No, but look, when you ask a question, set, set it up so he gives <laughs> you the answer. <laughs> Don't let him answer, and then you change the rules. I'm not changing the rules. You are changing the, the rules. rules of this is the same as Ballon d'Or. They change the rules all you the time. You asked him, Hall Bellingham and Harlan. <laughs> yes. You dived in and said, I don't want to hear about Messi. Yes. And then he said, OK, Haaland. And then you, and then you jumped in with your rule changes. <laughs> I didn't jump in with my I rule said, changes. After he told you I what you wanted to hear, then no, wait, you decided, no, I... as you do, oh my to God. change the rules. <laughs> my goodness. I am just merely making the point that international competition is proven in the past to be a huge contributor as to who wins the Ballon d'Or. And that was the point I was oh, putting yeah. forward. Alvarez. Shut up. <laughs> that was just the point I was paying forward. Yeah, we're changing the rules. Oh, God, 
What, what rules am I changing? Dad, I'm a dad. But, well, you but just Stevie, basically Stevie. disagreed with him. I Alex, didn't disagree. I put did. forward the point. You're Dan, torn again. Dan, you're torn again. Dan, yes. Yeah. Dan Thomas is doing the same thing as Ballon d'Or will do. Yes, they exactly. Exactly rules. my they point. They change the rules. But you ask me who do I think will win the Ballon d'Or first of Haaland or Bellingham, and I say Haaland. No, you, that's who you think should win it. No, but he said Haaland afterwards. I should. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, my God. Say Ballon d'Or. <laughs> Meanwhile, away from the Ballon d'Or, yeah. who would today's performance help more? Maguire or McTominay? Oh. Maguire. <laughs> really? Oh, McTominay. Yeah, just because McTominay scored two goals in the last five minutes. He, uh, he's not going to... No. So why does it help Maguire more? He was part of the, the barcode at the back for the goal, wasn't he? Well, because you know he's going to start Casimero. He's not going to drop Casimero and play McTominay. And you know he's playing Amrabat. He should. So he McTominay. Should, he, should take out, he should take out Casimero. Casemiro. Yeah, he should, but he won't. What? Well, he took him off no. half-time today. Why won't he start McTominay in his oh, so he's, 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 he's goes, he's there, Well, hold on. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, you're saying, you're just talking, you're acting as if Casemiro is you acting hold as if Casemiro is a drop Hold on, I just told you, he won't drop Casemiro so, for the next game. So why did he break it and he will play play Amrabat, time? And he will play Amrabat, so that means McTominay will not play. Whereas Maguire may, may start again. Right. So that's why it's Maguire. OK. Because McTominay has no chance. And no Maguire chance has quite, a me. No chance quite strong, isn't it? So do you think he's going to leave Casemiro out of the team the next time they play? I think it's international break. Casemiro probably playing for Brazil. Come back late. Nice excuse to play McTominay. Is that a yes or a no? I don't want to store it. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't want to store it. <laughs> yes, I think, look, if he's... If he, so you think if he can, he'll start McTominay? Definitely, 100%. Whoa. No you, doubt. You don't want to put a bet on it? I don't think I do. No, no I don't think so. <laughs> Good move. Uh, Frank, what would you like to say? Oh, that you make me uh, having a good time, you know, because you're well, a so that, funny yeah, guy, you yes, know. Yes, I'm not your audience members. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, but I think I, I think uh, I agree with Stevie on that matter. I think uh, I think it's going to be hard for McTominay to uh, to play the next game, and I think Maguire. Um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I think Maguire because of his game is going to help him to get more confidence and and maybe trust also. Uh, from uh, from Ten Hag, yeah. Oh, let's go. Time to go deep. Here we go, everyone. Uh -oh. Frank. Okay, I gotta have a glass of something. Mood. Here we go. <laughs> now, yes, be serious. Okay. Frank, do you adopt a similar preparation to your acting as you did when you were a player? And are there lessons from your footballing days that you bring into your acting? Oh, oh. good question. Well, uh, being in a play on stage. Uh, um, asked you to be very precise uh, because on top of it's a comedy so you have to uh, launch the the words properly and, uh, and also you know when you have to stop to order in order to the the, the audience to laugh not talking about uh, uh, when they when they're laughing when somebody's scoffing you have to stop your sentence so it's very it's a very precise uh, job where football is more an intuition um, uh, way of uh, of thinking. So um, I would say that I use my discipline, the discipline that you have to have, to uh, to listen to uh, the the director, for example, or my uh, or my uh, my um, teammates, let's say, mm -hmm. and uh, and they are not used to that because actors they think they are all the best. They don't want to listen to anybody. They don't know hierarchy. Um, uh, where football players. Even if we don't agree, we know what we have to do, meaning listening to the, to the coach, for example, and uh, accepting, accepting the, the hierarchy. So it helps me a lot uh, to be precise, to work hard, and maybe harder than the others. And uh, it's why maybe uh, it kind of worked for me. Frank, it's quite an intimate theatre that you're in. What's it like when you see someone on their phone or chatting or doing something like that? Sleeping. During your <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> sleeping? Oh, oh, I, I, I see that on, on Sunday afternoon when we have, I would say, older people coming. Right. I saw some people sleeping. Uh, well, it, it cracks me up. It makes me laugh. You know, I say, well, it's a good nap. You know, having some people laughing, suddenly so you fall asleep. So it's nice. But I had some people, you know, 
having their phones, they forgot to put it in silence. So yeah. uh, when you jump on it, you make you make a joke a, a joke about it. You you improvise Ooh. and. Uh, yeah, it's it's part of the game. You have people again coughing. You have people talking. You have people, uh, you know, uh, commentating what they see, and they, they don't <laughs> care about terrible. the fact that you are talking. So, <laughs> so it's so. it's it's a, but it's a it's a it's a live it's a live show. So you have to handle all uh, situation, and it's uh, it's nice. It's very interesting, and it's uh, it's can be scary, but it's uh, it's it's overall funny. Um, you are using my you are using my video of me la uh, running. I would like to have a video of Frank. Someone is on the phone and he will like. Dru, 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 je le vois le téléphone, hein? <laughs> Could we have that? <laughs> Could we have that? <laughs> Did you just have a breakdown? Yeah. Well, well, you know what? <laughs> I didn't know you could speak Czech as well. Maybe one day, maybe one day you will see that. We okay, will yeah, see that you. one day. Uh, oh, there we oh, go. There we go. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, so I, know, I, I already know what yeah. Jan's answer to this is. Which of the okay. panel's favourite oh, TV oh. shows or movies, past or present, would you love to make a special appearance in? Which of the panel's oh. favourite TV shows or movies, past or present, they would love to make a special appearance on. Nah, I know. I know. Okay, Frank, you can start because I, I have to understand this better. Frank, start. Uh, I would have loved to play in Friends. That was my show. That was, and I still watching it. I mean, the six guys in it, uh, how they prepared it. It was a way for me to learn English, but it also helped me to write uh, the, 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 the play that I, that I wrote and, uh, and also to direct some guys when I was uh, uh, also director. It's, uh, it's very... It was in the 90s for 10 years. It was great. Yes, it was a perfect show. And uh, for me, it was the best show and I would have loved to be in it. Jan, I thought that I was going to be your answer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, be I careful. Mean, uh, careful I, what you say yeah. now. Uh, but I won't say that. I just say that Please, Frank, can you tell me how it was then to be the boyfriend of Jennifer Aniston? Yeah, there uh, it what is. I would like, <laughs> what I would like to do that is I would, I would like to pay the consigliere in Godfather. I would like to be Tom Hagen in Godfather with oh. Marlon Brando. Oh, wow. Yeah, that would be my favorite role. Stevie, you actually made a special appearance on a show that I would have loved to have gone on. With her? Which was Question of Sport. When I was oh, younger, right, I'd love right. to have gone on Question of Sport. They would have been uh, brilliant. No, that's not a good one. Very good. <laughs> Uh, anything you would like to make an appearance in or go and see? Yeah, Only Fools. Only Fools and Horses, which is a very popular horses, yeah. uh, sitcom mm. in the 80s and 90s in England, yeah? yeah? Absolutely. Oh. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Craig is not here. You could have played in Two Grumpy Men, couldn't you? Uh, yes, yes, most definitely. <laughs> he, he'd be on The Muppets, wouldn't he? Uh, yes, well, you're <laughs> one of the guys on The, <laughs> the Muppets. Sure, yeah. Uh, you, do. You, can, you two could be Stanley and Waldorf up in yeah. the. Uh... Yeah, probably. Uh, final. Qu oh, no, sorry. Jan, what would. what? What, sorry, Jan. That, okay. ring, that rings hard. <laughs> no, well, it's because the grammar isn't correct. So okay. It's, 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 oh, so it's not your yeah, fault. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, yeah, don't not blame me. Fault, Jan, what do you make of Hoyland? Yeah, what do you make? I'm very pleasantly surprised. Made the only green light from United season, especially from the transfer window. Well, I must say, when they took him, young kid scored eight or nine goals for Atalanta. He didn't score against the big teams, but he was there. He scored three goals against Finland, but not 100%. I thought maybe, what have they done him at Manchester United? Not that he was a bad player, but is this the real deal? I must say, what I've seen from Haaland, I just love the player. He got so many things to it. Even today, from a very, very bad Manchester United team, and especially in the first half, he was running, he was trying, he was trying to get the, the boys with him. He's a young kid. This guy is developing to something great. I think that of all problems Manchester United got to, got to solve, they have solved their number nine position. The number nine position will be Highland for years to come. This is the real deal. I think he could be as good as you get. Better than Nunez? Did you hear me? No. No, I had something else in my mind. I, I did not think the goal he scored against Galatasaray, mm. I didn't think he had it. The one on one went for a pick up on the halfway line. He made the finish look. So why is, Nune why is Nunez easy. better? Well, he's got more goals. <laughs> well, if you're going to be like that.
If you're going to be like that, it's just silly. Well, I, just, I just wanted a, <laughs> I wanted a sense. Well, I'm just copying you, isn't I? What's that? Being stupid. What? Well, well, no. <laughs> no. Being silly. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Wow. wow. Love, love, love. Hey. love. Hey. What could be sitting on the other hey, side that's of the That's all right, it? that's okay. The, the that's all right. I, I, was expecting an obje I was expecting an objective answer. But there we are. If that's the way you're going to be, then you just continue to be silly. Like that. Okay. So, well... <laughs> Uh, don't you think, Stevie, the quality of the bottom ten teams in the Premier League has become lower this season? Any other past season than you'd worry for Everton? It's the worst. You, I think it's the worst. I think I saw it. The worst we've seen from the three promoted teams maybe ever in the Premier League in the opening eight matches. I've been trying really hard not to, to think the wrong way because I was trying to convince myself that, number one, it's because of the money. But there are so many teams that you just don't see getting close to the majority of the top half of the table. Mm. I mean, are the, are, the, are, the, are the top 10 teams just swallowing up all the talent because they've got more money? I mean, Sheffield, are we surprised? Really? Brighton, don't have, all, United Brighton never don't have all the money, do they? Sheffield United never spent a penny coming mm. up. Luton Town never spent a penny coming up. So, that shouldn't be a surprise that they're that bad. Right. Burnley haven't spent an awful lot. They've sort of gambled on unknown players. So that shouldn't be a surprise. Everton... Why uh, are you hunched over like that? I don't know. I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I can't right. figure it out. Right. I can't disagree that there are too many... It seems like there are too many teams that can't compete with the majority of the Premier League. I... I Go on, Jan. I, I think it was. Uh, no, I, I think it, I, I watched Luton Tottenham today, and as you were saying in, in the show, that Luton created a lot of chances. But at the end of the day, it's lack of quality. Uh, I mean, there, yes, Richarlison missed a lot of, ch of chances as well in that game for Tottenham. But Luton, it seems that they're not good enough players. I'm not sure if it's the only money, Steve. Stevie, I, I think that if you see a philosophy that they have Brighton, they come up the table. You saw Aston Villa after they, after they change Gerard and change him away to get Emery in. I mean, there is a chance, but you need to have a philosophy. When I see, for example, Vincent Company, yes, we love Vincent Company, but you can't play like that. Then you will be really, you can say, yeah, you're playing great. Yeah, but that doesn't give you points. Yeah. Uh, Luton as well, how do they play? They try to play out from the back today. That, yeah, we saw how that happened. And Sheffield United, my former club, I would love to see them. What is the identity of the club? I can't see that, unfortunately. And then it's harder as well to hide that you don't have the quality players. How many hours till your flight, Jan? Uh, six and a half hours. Oh, not too bad. Have a lovely sleep. No. That'd be good. Yeah. That would be Frank, good. send him a video of your performance today. That will help. Uh, that is it. That brings us to the end of today's show. Just a reminder that ESPN FC will be back oh, tomorrow. Uh, Kieran's here. Nade, I think Nadem's here as well. Craig obviously here as well uh, to reflect on the big game between Arsenal and City. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, Stevie. Wake up, Stevie. Wake up, Stevie. Stevie. Wake up. Stevie. Wake up.